Today we're going to discuss the discovery of a super super strange galactic pair, or a pair of galaxies we have never seen before and that's kind of somewhat difficult to explain just because of the way they look. And here's actually how they look. And because of their very strange appearance, this is now referred to as the Cosmic Owl. And so in this video let's discuss everything we know about this bizarre object, focusing on exactly what this is, how this probably formed, and why this is kind of important for cosmology. But as you can kind of see from this image, this essentially appears to be some kind of a binary ring galaxy, in essence resembling an owl's face. And so to understand how this potentially formed, let's briefly discuss other ring galaxies, especially the ones that we still cannot explain. And while generally speaking, ring galaxies all resemble something like this. They're essentially disk galaxies containing at least one ring, but sometimes up to nine. And nine so far is the record. We've discussed this galaxy not so long ago in the video in the description. But basically there are some galaxies that for some reason manage to form an enormous number of rings. And though ring galaxies of different shapes and sizes have been discovered throughout the years, they're actually still relatively rare and somewhat difficult to find. But they all usually contain a relatively bright central region and a relatively bright ring, very often containing much younger, much more powerful blue stars. Which as a result suggests that these ring formations are very often extremely young, possibly only millions of years old, compared to the rest of the galaxy. With I guess the most famous and the most iconic example being right here, the Cartwheel Galaxy. But the most mysterious, and the one that became iconic back in the 1950s, and actually the one that still has not been fully explained, is the object you see right here. This is the famous Hoax object. Once again a few videos in the description discuss this in more detail. And here we have this almost perfect circle, with very old orange stars in the center, and much younger blue stars on the outskirts. Although surprisingly, if you look super close, you'll see that there is another ring galaxy inside of this ring galaxy as well. But that one is much much farther away, because it appears much redder. This is the result of redshift. But essentially for decades now the question has always been, so how exactly do they form? Because in theory, by answering the question of their formation, we can then answer other questions about galactic formation and galactic evolution. And so for many of these ring galaxies, the suggestion was always some kind of a unique galactic passage, very likely through the center of the larger galaxy. Or in essence, the larger galaxy serves as a kind of a target, with a smaller galaxy shooting directly through it. And as a result of this passage, the larger galaxy starts to ripple, producing gravitational disruptions, causing dramatic formation of stars in a circular or even ripple-like structure. Once again, the famous Cartwheel Galaxy exemplifies this pretty well. Although this galaxy containing three rings shows us what happens when there are several ripples, with each of them producing stars. And though this does seem to explain the majority of ring galaxies, as I mentioned in some of the previous videos, surprisingly this does not explain the most famous of them all, the Hoax object. Mostly because here we don't really know if there is a collision, or if something did collide, what exactly happened to that second galaxy. Which of course suggests that maybe in some cases, some ring galaxies can also form when some kind of an external accretion of dust happens around the central object. In essence, I guess, kind of similar to how planets form around stars. There's maybe some kind of a dust disk or some kind of a massive dust cloud that accretes around the galaxy and then starts forming stars. And in this case, the star formation takes place inside the shock waves produced by the accreted material. But interestingly, this newly discovered galaxy, the Cosmic Owl, potentially provides us with a lot of explanations for how a lot of this works and for how many of these galaxies form. And so let's talk about this new discovery in a bit more detail. But first, so let's also discuss this one issue that I always face when I prepare these videos and when I try to do research on various studies or access various media sites from certain locations. Pretty much every single day, at least one site somewhere out there, ends up geo-blocking me. And so yeah, I actually get this message quite a lot. And that even comes from uh, my workplace, YouTube. And so as someone who travels quite a lot and as someone who attends virtual conferences, this has become a major issue for me, especially as a lot of research nowadays comes from locations like China. And so obviously here there was just one solution. I had to get a VPN. Imagine trying to access a recent scientific paper 
or some kind of a really important live stream where a new scientific discovery has just been announced. And I get this. It's like having a telescope pointed at that super bright star, but missing it because there's always a cloud in front of you. Not to mention that a lot of streaming services like Netflix and Who and so on won't even let me watch stuff on them either, even though I'm paying for the service. And so the solution was eVPN. And following a very thorough research and trying to figure out which one is the best, I settled for the Shark, Surfshark. And mostly because they did actually provide a much better service than a lot of the competitors and included way, way more countries that I could connect to, as well as generally just having much better service and a lot more servers. And so when I reached out to Surfshark, they agreed to sponsor a video and provided me with a code Petrov that gives you four extra months if you subscribe to their service. You can see the code and the link on the screen or you can find it in the description below. And so since you get four extra months and there's a 30 day money back policy, I figured why not give it a try. And honestly, after months of using this, so far things have been pretty good. None of these anymore. This has also disappeared and I can watch pretty much everything on Netflix. And so maybe just maybe give Surfshark a try. And also thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And so let's talk about the Cosmic Owl. Once again, in terms of the appearance, this is a really strange object and almost looks like it's some kind of a mirror image. As if it's just a single galaxy that's reflected, maybe by some kind of a mysterious gravitational lens, or I don't know, some kind of a cosmic string or something. Except that based on the analysis by the James Webb, along with the ALMA telescope and the observations with the very large array, researchers definitively know that this is two separate objects. Even though they have nearly identical morphology, they do possess slightly different properties, slightly different types of gas, and even slightly different black holes in their centers. But nevertheless, it's super strange that this is two perfect ring galaxies in such a close proximity. And more importantly, this definitely appears to be some kind of a merger. In other words, these two galaxies are currently colliding, and we know so based on the observations right between them. And actually, it kind of looks like this. Here we have a definitive signs of shock and a lot of starburst formation, with this starburst triggered by some kind of an interstellar shock induced by the collision of these two galaxies. In this image, it's visible as the slightly brighter spot in between the eyes. But there's also this very strange beak. And here this beak is potentially the result of the binary jet coming from one of these supermassive black holes. And the reason the researchers believe there is a jet is because of the ALMA observations. Here, by looking at this in the radio light, it becomes apparent that there seems to be a hot spot in two different locations, as if there are two jets coming from one of the black holes. With one of these jets pointing directly at one of the collision spots, surprisingly enriching the starburst activity and creating even more shock. In other words, the beak in this case seems to have even more star formation, which is visible as a very bright extended nebular line emission and an extremely massive reservoir of cold gas. But based on the calculations and the observations, researchers were able to calculate the overall mass of these galaxies and even discover what kind of black holes they seem to possess. For example, here, in total, the mass is approximately 320 billion solar masses, with central black holes being approximately 67 and 26 million solar masses. So much larger than the one in the Milky Way, but not as massive as some of the giants we've discovered in the past. On top of this, the size of this ring is approximately 26,000 light years. And so these two galaxies are actually pretty small compared to the Milky Way. Our galaxy is about four times larger, with both galaxies also undergoing a lot of star formation in their newly formed rings. And so basically here we have a twin collisional ring system, which technically would be kind of difficult to explain. It's literally like having two hoax objects side by side. But since both galaxies are symmetrical, and since they're both so close to each other, this implies one thing. Both ring galaxies were very likely formed at the same time by some kind of a third object. In other words, here we have an almost definitive evidence for this just being the result of a previous collision. These two galaxies very likely had something else pass through both of them, which then created ripples that then formed rings. With this collision very likely taking place 38 million years ago. And that's based on the measurements of the starburst activity from both galaxies. And because both rings look very similar and seem to have exactly the same size, this only confirms that it was probably the same object. The same strange object that shot through both galaxies, forming the double ring. 
but this is not very close to us, so it's actually kind of difficult to study anything else. This is at a redshift of 1.14, or nearly 12 billion light years away from us. So this is definitely not a close object. But even at this distance, it's still actually possible to calculate a lot of other properties, including velocities. And surprisingly here, the gravitational shockwave velocity, which is calculated to be 208 kilometers per second, seems to be extremely similar to a lot of other similar objects we've seen closer to us, with the most famous example being ARP-147. As a matter of fact, a lot of parameters from ARP-147 seem to directly match with the observations of the bizarre cosmic owl, with only one main difference, the collisional angle. And so here we also have these binary ring galaxies, but whatever collided with them seems to have done so from a different angle. But the overall formation process and the overall properties at the end seem to be extremely similar. And so by studying ARP-147 and by comparing it to the cosmic owl, it will very likely become possible to solve the mystery of ring galaxies once and for all, but even more importantly, this also shows us more about galactic mergers, tells us more about how a lot of gas seems to be redistributed inside galaxies when different galactic collisions occur, and of course shows us how black holes inside galaxies become active, and how they then influence star formation in nearby regions. And so here this unusual event demonstrates how gas around galaxies influences stellar formation, transforms galactic morphology, and eventually leads to new baby stars, making this one of the most important discoveries in terms of galactic mergers and ring galaxies in the last few decades, or one of the strangest and most unique examples of collisional ring galaxies. And so I'm sure in the next few years, this particular galaxy is going to help us answer a lot of questions about galactic formation, and possibly explain the famous Hawks object once and for all. But until we get some of those answers, you can also learn about this object and other unusual ring galaxies in previous videos in the description. And I guess on that note, until future studies or new discoveries, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos and videos without any ads, maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. And of course, thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video.